Praise be Jesus and Mary. We heard in today's gospel that uh, when Jesus healed the paralytic, some of the scribes harbored, harbored uh, evil thoughts, and you know our Lord knew it. Um, so we, you know, let's not forget that uh, God knows our evil thoughts as well. Um, so today we're going to consider um, when bad thoughts are sinful. The, the great danger of bad thoughts and, you know, well, bad thoughts when entertained and, um, you know, the remedies against bad thoughts. Uh, first of all, you know, there are two ways that people go astray regarding uh, sin the sinfulness of bad thoughts. Um, some are scrupulous and they're afraid that uh, every thought is a sin. And uh, this, of course, is not the case. You know, it's, it's not the bad thought uh, that is sinful. I mean, our minds are always working. We come up with some crazy thoughts out of nowhere. Um, it's the consent uh, to the thoughts that is sinful. You know, all of the malice of, of mortal sin uh, consists in a bad will. Um, that's why St. Augustine teaches that um, there, where there is no consent, um, there's no sin. And um, even if the temptation or, you know, the rebellion of the flesh uh, should be very violent, you know, um, there's no sin as long as there's no consent. Now, others have a lax conscience. And uh, they think that evil thoughts, even if they're uh, willfully uh, indulged in, are, are not mortal sins, you know, unless the act is carried out. Um, now this is an error that's first worse than the first. Um, now what we cannot lawfully do, we cannot lawfully desire. Um, therefore, bad thoughts to which a person consents has the same malice as the bad act. Um, and, you know, as, as sinful works separate us from God, so do sinful thoughts. Uh, we read in the Book of Wisdom that uh, perverse thoughts separate us from God. The uh, Second point is the, the great danger of bad thoughts when entertained. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, we learn that it's necessary to, to constantly guard against all bad thoughts, which are an abomination to God. Uh, they're called an abomination to the Lord because, you know, as the Council of Trent teaches, that uh, bad thoughts, uh, particularly uh, thoughts against the Ninth and Tenth Commandments, sometimes inflict on the soul a deeper wound, and they're more dangerous than external acts. Uh, why? Well, uh, first of all, they're more dangerous because uh, sins of thought are more easily committed than sins of action. Um, secondly, you know, at the hour of death, uh, we 
may not be able to commit sinful actions, but we could be guilty of sins of thought. And uh, whoever has the habit of consenting to bad thoughts during life will be in danger of entertaining them at death um, because the temptations of the devil are more uh, violent at that time. He knows that his time is short and he makes uh, great efforts to drag souls to hell at that moment. Um, the third point is on the remedies against bad thoughts. Um, the prophet Isaiah says uh, that to be freed from bad thoughts, we must take away the evil of our thoughts. And so what does he mean by taking away the evil of our thoughts? Um, he means that we should take away the occasions of evil thoughts, you know, by avoiding uh, dangerous TV shows or uh, video games, websites, and, and movies, you know. It's, uh, it's also necessary to abstain from uh, immodest uh, dress or keeping bad company and, and uh, reading books, you know, that are obscene or just otherwise bad. Um, when, when dating, you know, avoid places that would be occasions of sin. Um, you know, some young people ask, well, Father, uh, you know, is it, it's in, is it sinful to, to make out or, or, you know, just how far can you go? <laughs> you know, that, that's hard to say. Uh, each person is, is different. Um, one thing I can say is that uh, People who in, engage in such activity um, are often in the proximate occasion of mortal sin. And we know we not just have to avoid sin, we have to avoid occasions of sin. And um, experience shows that uh, few of them are, are found without grievous faults. Um, and what's useless uh, for them to say that uh, they neither had a, a bad motive or thought. Um, this is a, a trick of the devil. You know, in the beginning, you know, he doesn't suggest bad thoughts, but um, by frequent uh, conversations and, and close contact, you know, the the affections become strong, and and the devil blinds them uh, to the danger and sinfulness of their conduct. And before they know it, you know, they've, they've lost their innocence and separated themselves from God. Uh, just uh, how many young people have been deceived by the devil and caught in that snare, we'll never know. Um, you know above all, in order to avoid uh, bad thoughts, women, men and, and women must uh, refrain from uh, looking at each other as mere objects. We have, we have to get into the habit of practicing a custody of the eyes. Um, remember the words of, of Job. Um, he said, I made a, a covenant with my eyes that I should not so much as think upon a virgin. Um, he says he made a covenant with his eyes that he would not think. Now, what have the eyes got to do with thinking? Well, St. Bernard uh, says that uh, through the eyes, the darts of impure love, which kills the soul, enters the mind. Therefore, uh, St. Alphonsus says, you know, it's always dangerous to, to look at uh, young people, you know, who are elegantly dressed and to look at them purposely. 
uh, without a just cause is at least a venial sin. Um, when, when thoughts against uh, chastity present, present themselves, uh, it's always necessary to banish them at once. Um, you know, the instant you perceive the thought, reject it. Uh, one saint after another will tell us that uh, we can fight any temptation that comes along except temptations against chastity. We have to flee from those. Uh, we are no match. Uh, but, you know, should the temptation continue, mention it uh, to your confessor. St. Philip Neri used to say that a temptation disclosed is half conquered. Um, St. Pacomius uh, one day saw a devil boasting that, you know, he often made a, a certain monk fall into sin because when tempted, the, the monk, instead of turning to God, uh, listened to his suggestions and began to reason with the temptation. But uh, the saint heard another devil complaining that he could gain nothing from the monk whom he tempted because the monk immediately had recourse to God for help. Um, he was always victorious. Um, ask and you shall receive. You know, our Lord is faithful. Uh, have recourse to Mary most pure. Uh, pray, you know, three Hail Marys, the, the Memorari, and uh, she will never fail to help you. Oh.